Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I think we can start without the, the sound that usually plays before the breakout sessions. Um, my name is Lana, and I will talk you through all the things documentation templates today. Um, I have a, an important um, disclaimer to make. I will be referring to the how human brain operates and to the neuroscience because I'm kind of into this thing. Um, and I should state that I'm not an expert in the neurotypical behavior. So when I will be referring to the how human brain operates, I will be talking about some researches and how uh, neuroscientists perceive that. Um, so everyone is different. It can, it can work differently for everyone and everyone is respected. So we'll be talking about more um, typical things, but it can be different for everyone. Um, so about, a little bit about me and why I'm speaking in front of you today. Uh, I was a technical writer for more than 10 years. Um, and now I'm kind of shifting the gears more towards the product management, but I'm still staying on the writer's side of things um, because uh, we are developing a product um, for writing technical documentation in the um, IDE and to making it better and easier for people um, called writer site, pun intended. And also, more importantly, I'm a member of the project steering committee uh, of the Good Docs project. The Good Docs project is an open source initiative that is aimed to help people, um, non-writers, professional writers, everyone, to write better documentation, to write it easier, um, and to like elevate the way they're writing documentation through like by providing the resources such as templates. So this is kind of our flagship program, uh, project, the templates, and I will talk you through this a bit later. Um, I believe there is no need to justify the need for good documentation for the open source projects in this audience because you came to something that is called TechDocCon, not to be confused with the Comic Con, I believe. And, but I will try. Um, so this is a few numbers, a few facts from the open source maintainers. Um, it was an interview uh, held by the Linux Foundation uh, who brought us all <laughs> together today. Um, and the significant majority of the project leaders, the open source project leaders, they um, express concern in the level of the documentation for their open source project. And that's because documentation often relies solely on volunteers. And that's why it's kind of underperforms and might be uh, not on the level they want it to be. And bigger open source projects, like most critical ones, they usually have either a documentation leader who partially or solely tasks only with the documentation, but not all the open source projects can afford that. Um, so usually it's just uh, um, like sporadical tasks uh, for that people volunteer on. And another fact is that um, seven, um, this is from the Tidalift um, survey made in 2019 states that 72% of the developers, they, when they're making a decision, like they select the open source project or like a library to use, uh, for them, one of the key factors is established processes and documentation. So you see there is a gap in what uh, open source project maintainers can afford, what they have resources for, and what people who are selecting the project uh, to use open source um, software to use, uh, actually need. And here's where the templates may come into play and help as a shortcut for writing better documentation without like huge um, efforts. But you may ask me, like why templates? There are plenty of ways how to make documentation better and how to gain trust for the project, for the open source initiative. Um, one of the reasons lays deeply inside uh, our, how our brains operate and in our physiology. So um, many researchers state that human brain operates like a huge pattern recognition machine. So from very early age, we recognize patterns like letters, shapes, even social behaviors, and then match everything that we are stumble upon to these patterns. Um, so you can think of it as if you're driving or navigating a street by foot, 
when you see a red octagonal sign, uh, regardless to which country you're in or which language it is written in, um, you know that possibly this is a stop sign and it assumes some behavior. Um, and another reason I like to compare documentation templates with design patterns in software. So same as design patterns, such as um, Observer or Singleton, they provide a typical solution for a typical problem. So someone has been solving something like this before, and they have uh, come up with a ready to use, um, a ready to like a shortcut to solve this issue. Um, the same with the template, they provide uh, a typical way to solve uh, an issue with the technical communication. So if you need to communicate some information, this is a content type that is most suitable for this. And here is how it should look like, just fill the, the gaps and you will look good. Um, both for like reader and writer. Same as um, design patterns do with the code. And here are the few examples from Refactor and Gura just really into their illustrations of the design patterns. Um, so, this is a, a little bit of the ground of why I'm speaking about templates today, but what is a template? Um, how many of you have ever, like if you approach the documentation task, um, you probably have been searching for the document like this. So you need to write a how-to, let's find something in your existing documentation, like, or external. Uh, then remove all the not needed parts and write your own because I have done it like many times personally, because some documents are like bloody good. Why not use the structure? Why don't use some wordings? So templates can be basically these good docs, but all the specifics is already removed and you can replace it with some like, replace with some instructional text that you need to substitute. Um, so what the template can include is, um, like on the very basic level, it's a form. So it's like outline of the sections that you need to, like certain documents need to have like either optional ones or mandatory ones. But this is a very basic level of um, perceiving the template. Um, it also can contain content. So it's like specific instructions, set of actions or questions to ask while you're filling the template. So what you need to think about to write a good document of a certain type. And on the next level, it can also contain some um, specific guidelines, like examples of the wordings you can use. Um, so there are a few levels, um, depending on how detailed the template is, but it's not only about outlines of the structure. This is what I wanted to highlight to you. Um, here is an example of uh, one of the templates we are doing in the Good Docs project. This is a README. I think this is the most relatable one for the open source conference. And as you may see it, yes, it has an outline, like here are the sections you need to fill, to, uh, here are the ones that we recommend, here are the ones that are optional, they solve different um, issues, they, like they serve different goals, but it also contains some contents. So which questions you need to ask to fill those gaps, uh, and also it contains examples of particular wordings, like for example, in the section uh, for, the, for whom this project is, um, you can just fill the gaps and it like provides the example of how it may look already. Um, so here are a few uh, problems that uh, templates can solve in the um, software um, development project. First of all, it's about consistency. So Here's what I've been talking about form. Uh, you can ensure that document has all the needed sections, the uniform structure, and the reader will expect some certain structure from it. Also, you can ensure that it speaks the same language, so the language and the tone is consistent if you have something specific to your project. But it also can help to streamline processes. So first of all, reduce formatting time because everything, like when you inherit from a template, it is already in place. And it also can help to reduce potential omissions. So if you're forgetting to put things into a document, it's better to add it into a template. At one of the places when I have been working, we prepared a template for program managers. 
uh, for the vision documents and like each section and each instructional text in this template uh, was based on the real things that have been forgotten in the past. So it's like a, a way to pack some best practices, yeah, like your organizational um, rules. And knowledge sharing, because template is a good deliverable to share knowledge across teams on how to better solve some tasks, like how to communicate something, and to onboard newcomers. So through reading the template, they they picking up how we work here, what are the rules, what is expected uh, from you in a certain amount of time while you will not be a newcomer anymore. So you're packing the institutional or community with them into the template. And I will guide you through the process of how you may use the template. So it's not only like we don't want you to come up with uh, to find yourself in a situation with the like draw an owl thing, like draw two circles, then draw the rest of the owl. So we'll be uh, iteratively <laughs> filling up some virtual template. Um, but why is it easier for people to use the template rather than just write something from scratch? Um, it's I will refer to the brain thing again, but this is the last time throughout my presentation, I promise. Um, this is because open-ended prompts require more cognitive load because they, are, uh, they need more brain sectors to participate in the process uh, of uh, processing the, the task if you just have a very abstract prompt um, rather than if you're asked uh, questions one by one. So you, you can probably think of yourself. For, uh, for many people, it's easier to answer questions about yourself than just tell about yourself without any prompting. And the second reason is that concrete questions tap into semantic memory systems um, rather than um, other sectors uh, of the memory, such as uh, procedural memory or working memory. And they're more rapidly accessible because of the where it is located in our brains. Um, so imagine a developer or an expert has explained something during a meeting or in a Slack message or send you a voice message, whatever that was, or you have made a recording um, during the meeting with them. And this is like basically a wall of text with some extra words in it. And there are probably even too many um, extraneous information. So what we can do, we can take already familiar ready, readme template from the good docs, uh, which like prompts you through where to place parts of this answer and just try to fill some parts that we already have in this um, like wagon wall of text -ish explanation. Um, we have some data now, so we have some basic explanation of what the, the project is doing, who it is designed for, um, but there are still lots of gaps you need to fill, but at least we have something for now. So you uh, fill something, you have certain result, and then you can mark all the uh, parts that you're missing. So you can formulate questions based on the things that are not yet reflected uh, in the document. And then you can come back to you, to the expert and ask these questions. Probably some time will pass, so we are like going iteratively. You can ask it one by one because it's easier. In the example, I'm asking them all uh, at the same time. And here is how the final result can look. I have uh, placed a link to the GIST if you want to see what 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 is the result. But it's basically like very iterative approach. And to loop into the previous talk. Uh, you may notice that each smaller task, like formulate the questions, like fill the gaps and check what's missing, can be given to an LLM as well, because if the task is small and defined enough for the fresh grader who just searching for a job, then it might be um, okay for LLM to do that. But um, this is just... Um, for the sake of pure experiment, uh, I think it's possible. Um, and also, as they say, don't roll your own crypto. Why come up with your own template all the time? 
uh, if there is no need for that. So if you're just starting over, you're coming up with some minimal viable documentation, a set of documentation for a project, it's totally fine to use some existing ones as a starting point. You can use the GoodOcs project templates, for example, and then you can, while you're understanding better who are your audience, who, uh, what, what do you need, what do you need to, what are the business goals or like the community goals, then you can inherit, mutate, pack your own ideas, like um, change the order of sections or change what you are actually placing in them, or based on the feedback you also can change it. And one optional but really appreciated step is contribute back to the community. Um, if you have any time, this will be also very appreciated. But the point is, you don't need to roll your own crypto all the time. It's totally fine to take some um, industry community provided templates, such as the good docs ones. And then um, in the next part, I will guide you through a few use cases. Um, Oh, in different situations, templates can be useful differently and they also may have limitations. And this is how DALI by OpenAI sees these um, use cases. And first, uh, first uh, case is a lone writer working with a team of developers. Um, so their main challenge is they want to maintain consistency and they want all the document be similar and kind of at least be close to some standard, but they are they want to collaborate with the SMEs and they don't want to be a gatekeeper. So they don't want all the documents be reviewed by them or in any way like, so they don't need to keep the gate. So templates for a lone writer who are working in a team of developers is a way to accept help while retaining some kind of control. So it's kind of a checklist that helps you to ensure that all the necessary meaningful elements are covered and all the documents have an expected structure. So like API um, method signature description contains all the needed things and like um, release notes uh, are sorted by date and also contain all the needed things. And additional value is um, from my own experience, I have been working as a technical writer and team of developers, and I have inserted a process inside the template. So I have created plenty of templates for them to use, and they have been creating documents uh, from them, not from just blank uh, page. But I have added the specific tag to all of the templates. So when someone has been creating a document from a template, um, I had a filter that filters all the documents has, that had, has been recently created from the template. So it's kind of like, um, I am not watching you, but I'm still looking at you, at what you're doing, but it's kind of a post processing. So I can go, okay, like here are the documents that have been created by them and I have a filter for them. Um, yeah, so you can streamline processes using templates as well. Second case is about mid-sized team of writers and they're working together on a daily basis, not like in a separate um, initiatives or products. I, and they need to have shared procedures and to share the like quality standards and the way they work um, and maintain consistency during the routine updates like releases, for example. Uh, so for them, templates is a contract over equality criteria and it's kind of a, an instrument for a team lead uh, to speed up the time to market things, speed up the releases. And also it can serve as a deliverable during reworks or changes. So if you're changing the way you're writing docs, you can register it back to the template, like all the, the documents, like all the Tutorials now need to have like sections with prerequisite and here is why. Um, but in a team like that, um, potential pitfall is that templates may limit your ability to come up with creative solutions and think out of the box. So if you are in progress of solving some new task or you have a business problem to solve, like for example, we need to make some feature or project more discoverable or we are reworking our um, 
information architecture completely, then maybe it's time to put place like uh, put templates aside, and then you can record the things you came up to in a template. So now we work like that. And uh, third case is about larger group of writers um, with more autonomy from each other. So what they need is they need to agree on the ways they work, but they don't, uh, they don't have peer reviews, so that they don't have direct control of each other. They are working in different parts of the organization. Um, so think of the organization of the like Red Hat size or canonical size. Uh, they have plenty of writers, but they can not, like their task may not overlap. So for them, templates is uh, the way to agree on expected documentation structure to facilitate onboarding newcomers because they may not have one team lead. Um, and it can serve as a repository um, of best practices. So think about Canonical, they're using Diataxis um, framework for structuring their documentation. So whenever, in which part of the canonical uh, someone is working or which, whichever documentation you're reading, you can expect the same structure, uh, like how-tos, tutorials, references, and concepts, um, because they have plenty of things, like not only Ubuntu OS, but like infrastructure, data solutions, and um, AI solutions as well, uh, from what I remember. And the fourth case is about open source uh, project accepting contributions. In some sort, if it is similar to the first one about loan writer, but uh, the difference is that if in first case and in second and third cases, you're working like in the same team and you can, you can figure out things, here you have external contributors. So you need to communicate even better what is expected from the contribution to this project. So templates, help to minimize errors, to help maintain consistency, but also they set a standard. So you can make templates for issues, for pull requests, um, so that contributors know what to expect, what is the contribution pro process look like. Um, so to sum up this part, um, I have mentioned a few potential pitfalls and limitation to templates. So first one is if you're solving a creative task and you need a burst of creativity and out of the box thinking, maybe the, you can put templates aside for now and then record the results of your rework or results of your um, creativity in the template. Um, same for the flexibility and um, kind of adaptiveness. Um, you need to know when it's okay to deviate from the templates. So for example, if you're uh, writing documentation for a completely new audience, um, you can apply template with some grain of salt. So you can think maybe we need like this section we don't need and we need to introduce another one. And also risk of being used incorrectly. So always uh, get back to the purpose of the template or certain sections in it. For example, it's easy to use internal templates for external document or use wrong like content type. So you need to uh, think of whether I am using the correct template or not. And here is the part when uh, I will talk you through the Good Docs project. Um, the Good Docs project uh, educates and empowers people to write better documentation, to write it easier by providing them with resources, best practices, and tools um, to enhance their documentation, both for open source and commercial projects, that does not matter. And our mission is to create writing suite that is open and free to use and easy to use as well. Uh, so the project was um, created in 2018 and it's originated from Google's Season of Docs, which I believe Erin will be speaking, um, um, I think, one talk further uh, from this one. And now we have pretty active community. We have more than 60 active collaborators from all over the world, like literally all the continents, and also from many companies such as Google, Broadcom, Canonical, Red Hat, JetBrains. And the point is that if you don't have a technical writer, or you don't have a full-time documentation leader in your project, wisdom of all these people is at your service. So you can use 
the templates, consult with us, talk to us, like give your feedback, what, where the, like, the rough edges are, where it does not fit into your particular business issue, and we'll really uh, try to help you and incorporate your feedback into that. Um, so, speaking about resources, our flagship pro uh, project is preparing templates um, for various content types that are solving different um, business or community problems. So, here's how our repository looks. Um, currently, all the templates are in markdown format, but we are looking in the, the possibility to provide various deliverables like ASCII doc, for example, or RST or something else. If you particularly interested, interested in that part, uh, you, you also can help. And they go under zero clause BSD license, which is like basically do whatever you want with them and use, mutate, inherit, change, even I believe using the commercial development. So it's, I think, the most relaxed type of license. And here is like already uh, familiar to you readme template. Um, here is how it looks when you are going into a particular folder. So it contains template, but it also like we don't want to leave it you into the wild and like go draw the all. Um, but it also has a guide and a process document that guides you through the process of filling certain sections in the template. Of course, if you need that. Um, so there is some instructional text in the template itself, but it's always recommended to look into a guide because this is the deliverable that really packs the wisdom of like which questions to ask while you are doing research and um, many other useful things. Um, and here is one more thing uh, that we have been preparing specifically for the open source communities. Uh, this is called open source doc pack. So we came up with a, um, with a pack of documents of the templates uh, that are that we find the most useful to jumpstart your open source initiative or project. So if you're just starting, this is the way to have more healthier, better community. Um, so it like contains README as a starting point and also like bug report, code of conduct, contributing guide, uh, the description of the team working. And uh, yeah, this is the just a starter pack. So then you can uh, go further and add to this like a few how-tos for most common and critical use cases, add some tutorials, add some um, referential information, but this is a, uh, what we envision as a starter pack if you want to be successful and if you want to run your open source community easier and better. Um, so yeah, please take that one, use it, tell us what you think. And here are a few ways you can help project. So the main thing is use our templates, of course. Um, the second one is the project that I'm running at the moment is we are doing a series of uh, user interviews to know how people approach the documentation tasks better. And after that, we'll improve um, our project um, based on this series of interviews. Of course, you can be a contributor and also we are working on our um, partnership program. It's about to be finalized, like probably next week or uh, the week after. So follow our website or LinkedIn if you're uh, interested. But the biggest thing is just use the templates. Tell us what you think. Each template contains the feedback um, link, so we'll be processing the feedbacks. And conclusions from a talk. Um, so templates can definitely streamline the quality of your documentation, the consistency, and help you with the collaboration by like packing the best practices and your community or organizational with them. However, they can be limiting and they can limit your burst of creativity. And there are situations when um, you can put them aside or uh, it's okay to deviate from them. Um, Use existing community templates uh, up to some point, then inherit, mutate, adapt them, and explore the GoodDocs project in its open source pack. Tell us what you think. This is really appreciated. Um, let's stay in touch. Here is my social difference, uh, social channels, and also um, a small spoiler. Um, 
starting from September 19, which is tomorrow, writer side will include the open source template by the good docs, like from just from the tool, so you can use it from your IDE. Um, if you so you you will have a, a choice whether to go to the GitLab repository and just clone it and download specific files or use it inside your IDE. And yeah, I'm ready to answer any questions if you have them. Questions? Okay, I will pass the microphone to you. Thank you. Um, I think, as you said, like um, using templates really helps, especially like non-native speakers when like you have English as the main language, and they're not primary English speakers. But do you have any tips for like filling out the templates? Since there's still some parts where like the person still has to fill out a lot of information, how do you maintain the quality of those parts of the docs as well? Yeah, that's a uh, real. Too many microphones on the square meters. Um, that's really good questions. Um, I haven't highlighted it specifically, but yeah, it goes with saying that it helps non-native speakers, and especially if you have like collaborators from all over the world, which we actually do have in our the Good Docs project as well. Um, so what we are doing is we are trying to incorporate as much as possible. Uh, like sort of a checklist into each section of the template. So even like you don't have a, uh, only like one liner on what should go into this section, but you also can have some typical wordings. Like for example, here you need to explain a little bit about the limitations of the concept and here's how big guys are doing that. Uh, so here are a few examples like X, but with like without any specific concepts like X and Y and, the, and Z. Uh, so, yeah, incorporating wordings into templates um, really helps. Uh, so you can use some ready-to-go one and like, uh, I don't know, go to the um, some LLM and also help you to enhance it. But it will be more specific prompt because it will not only contain like, you need to describe this, but also how do you do this? So. Um, like in the Good Docs project templates, it's specifically packed the how thing as well. Um, yeah, so you can, th this should be helpful because sometimes it's only um, like many instructional text reflects only like what you need to write, but not how. And we are trying to incorporate that a lot. Um, so yeah, this is probably the, the main tip. Uh, so if you are brewing your own ones or you like inheriting, um, try to find someone who, uh, first of all, try to look to the some very, you know, in each organization you probably have these docs that are passed like by the links because they're so good and so famous. They're just, people are sending them through Slack or like other messenger. So look at the examples that are already, you know, that they're great and just uh, pack it into a template without specifics. So why, think about why they're so good and so comprehensive. And another thing, uh, find someone who is good at writing. So uh, help, I uh, like try to incorporate their wisdom into the template. So if you know that some people are particularly good at that, it's pretty okay. Like you will not get into a situation when all the documents have the same wordings because you can uh, provide a few options, like how, how, how it's usually formulated here. So I think here is the main tip that I'm giving. Maybe I will think about something else, but not, not, not at the moment. Yeah, thank you. Ah, can you pass it? Um, yeah, it was a really fascinating talk. Thank you. Interesting, um, subject. And I was wondering, it doesn't work. It was. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's like okay. the way we assume that. So we have we are preparing packs for different business cases, like open source community is one of them. Open source project like API documentation is the one we have. Also like common documentation, uh, starter pack. So it's kind of considered as a group of the templates. So because like templates itself is like one content type and it should work in a system. So they all should uh, serve certain goal. So yeah, we are preparing packs to the uh, cases when you're jump starting the new documentation set for the project. So you kind of starting up, you have like five documents and then you can like add more depending on how your project is developing. So this is, this is the way to do <laughs> Yeah, definitely. This is always something that you kind of uh, deprioritize when you have a technical depth, of course. But that's why, like, templates at least help. You can place them, like, for example, you place those five and you clearly mark the to-do things there. And this can be also a good, like, you know, this good first issue. Uh, because uh, through contributing to documentation in open source, um, it's sometimes even more difficult than just contributing to the code because you need to more context. So if someone wants a good first issue to solve, to participate in a project, these to-dos will be great for them. So just, even if you just take the template, you really don't, haven't filled all the information, but you can place clear to-dos, then turn them into issues on GitHub or GitLab and mark them a good first issue to contribute to the project. So I think this is the best way to do that. Or at least you always can sort out, okay, we have this amount of to-dos. <laughs> uh, I, I think we either, yeah, Ian is, 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 is not into me, and then we, 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 are, we are providing the, the pull requests. But if we don't, <laughs> you can contribute. Yeah. So many time <laughs> uh, and I have seen the the hand from the back. Is it is it that? Can you wave? Do you have questions from somewhere in the back? No, not anymore. Maybe that was the same question. <laughs> so thank you very much, everyone. Um, enjoy your lunch, I believe, and get back to the TikTok con. We're just started. <laughs>